All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for signing up and logging in to learn the tools um, to network for procurement. Tonight, we have Ms. Kenya Harvey, our MWBE consultant over at Suffolk County Community College Entrepreneurial Assistance Center. She will let you know um, all the tools uh, to get ready for procurement. Um, so we will have this webinar recorded and posted on our YouTube. I will have our email and our phone number in the chat. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to raise your hand, put them in the chat, or use our Q&A. Okay, so Ms. Kenya. You're muted. Thank you, Ms. Jenny. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm just going to get the presentation started from the beginning. And like Ms. Jennifer said, it's the Learn the Tools to Network and Secure Procurement Opportunities, uh, presented by myself, um, MWBE consultant, Kenya Harvey. So in 2023, just recently, I believe it was in November, uh, the MWBE forum was conducted in Albany and um, there were approximately $3 billion awarded to MWBEs um, and state contracts. Um, and overall, there were 29 billion awarded since 2011. And this is for Governor Kathy Colchel. Um, So I say in, in, in lieu of what we just learned, how much of that do you want to grow, right? It all starts with being certified. MWBE certified. So what happens? You're certified and what next, right? So the next thing to do is to prepare your capability statement, in which okay. I call the business resume. Your screen isn't sharing. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I hear you clicking. Screen. There you go. There you go. And I'll just go back a little. Okay. Learn the tools uh, to network and secure procurement opportunities. Um, so in 2000, as I was saying previously, that in 2023, there were approximately $3 billion awarded to minority uh, and women-owned businesses, uh, enterprises uh, that participated in state contracts. Um, and overall, $29 billion were awarded um, since 2011, right? And that's per Governor Kathy Hochul at the MWBE Forum. And I say in lieu of what we just learned, how much of that do you want to grow, right? It all starts with getting certified. So now that you're certified, right? MWBE certified, what next? The next thing to do is to prepare your capability statement and which I call the business resume. A capability statement is a marketing document uh, that provides a brief synopsis of the business background and the capabilities, and then is given to the target New York State um, agencies or authorities for their upcoming opportunities. This statement should be straightforward and to the point, highlighting the company's area of expertise. The statement should be labeled and not more than one page. Um, the focus points in this statement are differentiators, uh, company data or data, the core competencies, and the contact information. Sections of the capability statement include the core competencies. In this section, you want to provide a short statement connecting the company's experience to that agency's needs. Um, you want to be brief and use short sentences, uh, no lengthy paragraphs. Um, your products and services listed in this area can be used, you can use bullets. So it can be bulleted. You don't have to use uh, long sentences or paragraphs. Uh, the next uh, section of the statement would be your past performance, right? In this section, you would list your top customers that have similar scope of work uh, of the goods and services that that agency is currently seeking, right? Um, you will include brief descriptions of the work performed on the past work. You can use a dollar amount for each job or project. This will show your capacity, your capacity to complete these jobs, whether they're a big job or a small job. But you also want to be sure to have the client's contact info, such as their name, uh, the title, the email, and the number ready if it's requested by the agency. 
The next section of the statement um, is called the differentiators. In this section, you're going to list what sets your company apart from the competing vendors. So if you're a competition, right, clearly articulate your company's value added and how it distinguishes you from the competition, right? For example, do you have a competitive edge in your pricing or do you have quality in your products or services? Does your delivery services promote customer satisfaction, et cetera? Another section on this statement is going to be the company data or data. In this section, you're going to describe your company's business capacity, the number of employees, your years um, of business operation, um, and certification types. Include the industry codes associated with your services. Uh, to go to go to uh, sorry, go to visit the industry classification websites to determine the appropriate codes for your firm or your business. Uh, some of the codes list that can be included on this statement would be the NIGP codes, which are the National Institute of Governmental Purchasing, uh, which is usually used to classify, classify vendors. You have the PSC codes, which are your product service codes. You have CSI codes, which are construction codes. And then your NASIC codes, uh, which is the North American Industry Classification System used to classify businesses. Um, so any, depending on the industry that you're in would depend on the type of codes that you select, okay? Um, also, moving over to the next section, which will be the contact information. Uh, in your contact information, you want to be sure to include your name, your email, your phone number, the website, and any and all social media um, sites that you are on. If possible, you can also include testimonials, awards, and accomplishments uh, you received for the business. So now I'm jumping into uh, examples of the capability statement. So I'm not sure if you can see uh, this clearly. So I do have one set aside. Hold on one moment for me to share. That's a little larger for you to view. Okay, this is much better on the eye. <laughs> so on this sample, as you could see, it clearly is labeled a capability statement. I know it says that on the bottom, but on the bottom, but the document should always be labeled a capability statement. Also at the top, you see where it says show your logo and contact information with a specific person's name, um, phone, and email, right? Um, so this statement, the sample was um throw it out from target gov uh, tips. Um, so I use a sample uh, to show you exactly what one should look like. And it also explains the different sections here, right? So we went over like your core competencies. And in this section, again, you used to, uh, it's a short introduction statement relating the company's core competencies, sorry, to the agency specific needs, uh, followed by keyword heavy bulleted point, bullet points. So again, here's the bullets, as you can see. Um, one, bullet one, no long paragraphs. Bullet two, use short sentences followed by the key heavy bullet points, right? So at the top and then the bullets. Create a new document for each agency or the prime or teaming opportunity. You wanna tailor each capability statement to the agency's mission or specific opportunity or the need. Uh, call this document, like I said at the top, a capability statement. Uh, preferably, this capability statement is a one page only on one side. So keep it to one page. Go to two sides only if absolutely necessary, right? But absolutely necessary based on your accomplishments, right? Um, you want to save and distribute this uh, document as a PDF, not a Word document or a PowerPoint or any other format, right? Because it protects what you put into it. Keep the file format small under one MB, okay? And use the whole page and keep the, the margins small, okay? Uh, in this section for the past performance, which I already just uh, talked about this a little bit, but you can list your past customers here uh, for whom you've done the similar work. You wanna prioritize by the agent, you know, the, the related agency to all federal um, or to other government or commercial contracts. If the past jobs do not relate to the, the agency's needs, don't put it on there. 
okay? Um, the differentiators, again, you wanna identify what makes you different from your com competitors or your competition and how this benefits that agency. So be sure to list that and be clear as possible. And let me just go back to the presentation. So I'll be jumping in and out because I do have um, some samples that are clearer in the PDF, PDF uh, format that seem to be uh, good on the eyes. So bear with me with that. So I'm going back to the presentation. Uh, so this is another statement um, here. I'm not going to go through each one of the sections, but as you can see, that some of the sections may be a little different, which is okay. Again, I call it the business resume. With your resume, uh, you know, we have different styles, different colors, different patterns that you can use. Uh, on this statement, um, it does have the core competencies, the differentiators, the company information. But as you know, as you can see on the right here, it says services, right? Um, the services are listed here. So you can do that as well, right? But what I want you to pay attention to, which I'm going to stop share again and, and give you a, a larger uh, copy of this, um, in the executive uh, summary section, see the screen now. Um, I, I wanted you to see what's here next to the logo. So when you are ready to write down your summary about your company, this is the type of information that should be there. Um, if you all could see it here, this company is saying that since 2010, the company is, or the company is the premier provider of procurement, acquisition, and supply chain management services. From analyzing raw materials to customer delivery, we follow your supply chain from beginning to end. We ensure that your business is running as smoothly and efficiently as possible by establishing a baseline for performance and prioritizing improvement to processes and policies. The company's leadership team will synchronize the supply chain with strategic objectives and train key personnel on the tactics, techniques, and strategies needed to make procurement acquisitions and supply chain management strategic part of business operations. A strategic part of business operations. So, I mean, you have to explain exactly in this section what it is that you do. Um, again, we, we said you could list your employees, um, but definitely how you operate here and how, um, you know, a buyer could really learn a little bit more just by reading this summary about your company. I do see a hand raise. Um, Darlene, uh, can we unmute Darlene? Darling, are you unmuted? Ah, you're coming in now. Do you have a question? Good to you. Hello. No questions? Okay, we'll keep going. Um, so again, this is a statement that you can use as well, the way it's formatted, but keep in mind that the statement should be labeled capability statement, and there should also be a logo here. So if you don't have a logo, I know Canva is awesome for helping you create one, right? Because you do need a logo. Um, it's a way of branding yourself and the buyers can see this, right? See your logo, see your colors, um, it's all about color here. Um, I'm going to go into another sample that has a little bit more color and it's a little bit, it's finished, right? So I just want to show you a finish. Oh, hands raised again. Okay, one moment. Darlene, are you ready? Darlene?
Uh, that may be up on accident. I'm not really sure, guys, but uh, I'm going to keep going. So let's get that other sample up. Okay. So this is a, a completed capability statement that I use as a sample as well, so that you can at least see the different sections. Um, some of these titles are worded a little different, but they mean the same thing. Um, but at the top, if you could see this logo here, a legacy point, tele telecommunications, connecting people, um, and then it's labeled, right? Capability statement. I mean, it doesn't have to be so big and bold, but definitely have it there. Um, as you can see in Legacy Point's uh, executive summary, it describes, again, their operation, how long they've been in business, and what they're about, right, and how they can help this agency, um, you know, help solve this agency's need. Um, also, it goes into the Cocobin disease. Again, they're using these bullets that's recommended, right, no lengthy or long par paragraphs. Um, so bulleted, services and solutions. Right. And then if we go a little further, the key differentiators is also both it, right? No lengthy paragraphs. Says a lot. Um, you know, yeah. even people. Yes. Uh, let me take questions. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Jessica, did you have a question? No, no questions. Um, okay, I'll keep going. So differenti differentiators are bulleted as well. Even the past performance. You see, we listed them here without the dollar amounts, which is okay. So if you have jobs that you've done and they're like small in dollar amount, um, don't put it, right? Again, don't add it, um, especially if it's not relevant to the need of the agency, but you should list the names. If they're like top names, like you see here, T-Mobile, um, that Navy Federal Credit Union, some names that stick out and you're like, you know, you see that they, they've done work for them and you're like, okay, and you know what T-Mobile's about and, and you know what um, Navy Federal Credit Union's about. So you're like, okay, so if they done work with this business owner. Let's let's look into this a little bit more, but definitely noting them on the past performance is also a help as well. Um, as we go to the left here, uh, we see the um, industry class certifications, you know, their, you know, their certifications that they have uh, obtained. We see the NASIC codes, all right? This industry is using NASIC codes. Okay, there's many. So you can use as many um, as you need, as many of the services that you provide, you put them here. But keep in mind that on a cap capability statement, your NACI codes, once you're certified with New York State as an MWBE, you will receive uh, codes, right? Your NACI codes assigned uh, based on the services you provide. And those NACI codes are the ones that you would add to your capability statement. Now, if you were approved for the like as many NASIC codes as this uh, capability statement have, surely use them, right? But only the approved NASIC codes, the ones that uh, were given to you for the certification are the ones that you will use, okay? Um, so it has to be for services that you are currently performing, uh, not nothing that you are um, hoping to do later on. So the codes must, sorry, must reflect current opportunity, current activities. Um, on the bottom, always be sure to add your contact information and your, hello? Yes. Sterling, you had a question? Oh, hi, Kenny, it's Deltra. Oh, hi, Deltra. How are you? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Looks like I was having a little bit of difficulty on the computer, so I had to log in via phone, but I'll be very quick. You're doing a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you. Um, no problem, you always do a great job. Thank you. I just want to go back really quick to like the previous slide and okay. ask you um, when when we were putting our stuff up as far as just like our company, when our company was started, this and the other. I was just wondering when we like, you know, 
work with other companies and say like um, we're the prime, but you know we're subbing to someone else, or we're going to work with another company, I should say, and do like a joint venture. If they have a longer history, uh, do we use their history or our history as far as just like you know, if we're doing the project together? Yeah, so it would be your history, right? The business's history, the business's capabilities. Um, so you have to demonstrate how the business is able to perform. Right, so subbing, um, receiving a sub opportunity is an opportunity mm -hmm. for the business. So you would use that subcon, the, the prime that's subbing you out, as your client, right? And then the work that you've done for them. What What if we're, we're the main and they're the the sub? If you're the main and and they're the sub, right? So would we be able to add our experience with their experience since we're working together? Uh, you know, I've come into this um, question before, and um, the only way that I could see that is if you guys were, like, in business together, like, mm -hmm. teamed okay. up to form some type of venture or something together, and then you still wouldn't want to separate it because you, his, his, their liability is not your liability. Got it, got it, got so it. So you do want to keep it as separate as possible. I mean, yeah. Okay. If you want to add on there that you've done and work with, right? Then you list that other agency's name. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to yeah, list them on there. Okay. All the other company's name. Weird. All right. Just with yours or um, you know, your company name, um, with the other company name, um, project amount or you know whatever it is that you want to add for that amount or that size to prove that size or capacity. Um, I would just say your name, that um, prime, uh, the subcon name, subcontractor's name, and then the past the work performed or the dollar amount below. And then looking at it, you would see that, you know, either you're either a joint or a partnership or you've done some type of work together. And you mm -hmm. can know um, that other company as a sub in parentheses. Or, okay. Know, okay. So Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Hi, I just had a, a question about the NAICS code. Why are the um, NAICS codes not the same for the state as it is for the federal government? So you mean as far as the SAM having um, the federal's cage codes? Oh, is that what it is? I thought the NAICS, the NAICS were federal codes and that I could use that in a, um, a contract with the state as I would with the federal just trying to figure out the difference between the two yeah so with state i could talk about the state codes are are nasics right for the part they they describe the services that you offer in your business um you have the ngip codes um which i believe would go on a federal but again um you want to be I, I, it's either nigp ngip or the nations that it'll request you input but the cage code um, is what you need to get federal contracting opportunities once you apply for the cage code it's an entity registration you would complete you because you get assigned that cage number right so that's federal now in that in that registration as well they do ask if you are a mwbe so this registration will um, certify you for doing work with the federal government as an MWBE or an SDBOB uh, business. So depending on your code, your services that you provide or the product, um, and I believe you have a product, right, Tina? That's right. That's right. I have a product. So product service code. Right now, the services, the NASIC codes, right? So the codes would be, I want to say that all don't say the same thing. You know what I mean? They they're different industry codes. You know, different codes for the industries. But for NASICs codes, what I've seen that they're based on your services that you provide. Um, so if you make um a product, so you want to do a NASIC code as a man, you, you know, you're a man, you manufacture it, right? If you are a retailer and you sell retail products, you're a retailer. I mean, so it, it's it's based on the activities that you do in the business. 
the naysayers. Got it. Got it. Right. Okay. And then the product service codes, um, you know, look into that a little bit more to see if I believe we had this conversation before to see if your product is in line um, with any of those codes. Right. Now, depending on who you're working with or the agencies, it could be federal, it could be state, you want to know your codes. Right. Okay, very good. I will. Especially for the capability statement. You you want to know which codes. And if they're PSI codes, um, I'm sorry, product service codes or the NASIC codes, uh, you want to list them all on the capability statement. So that you would be diverse in um, you know, a variety of agencies needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, is that Okay, clear. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh definitely. I just thought I thought that they were one in the same, even though I see that they all have different codes attached. Mm -hmm. I just was wondering if you could use the same NAICS, NAICS code for the, the state, any particular state. So okay, so I'm gonna use an example. Uh New York City, right? When you're applying for New York City, registering um, in their systems, they do ask you for your NASICs and they do ask you for your PSC code, right? Um, so again, you would have the opportunity to enter your NASICs code because you should have, you will have a NASIC because again, it's based on what activities you're performing and you would have a product service code because if you are, have a product, right? How are you service? How is that being, like, how is it service? So like, again, check the PSC uh, codes to see where your product comes into line with, right? So then you'll know that PSC code. Uh, construction codes, you know, you're, it depends on the industry you're in. So the CSI, the CSI codes would not pertain only if you're in construction. So definitely, and the NIGP codes, right? So there's the NIGP codes, then you have the PSC codes and the NACI codes. So you want to do research on those sites to see how your product or your service falls in, into place with the codes there and, and mark down those numbers because you'll need them for the capability statement. And if you're applying for New York State certification, you'll need that uh, to know your NASIC code as well. But don't worry because they do have a NASIC code lookup in that application. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? So I'll keep going. So we talked about this statement here. Uh, again, past performances, contact info. Uh, just be sure to have everything you need, especially these sections here, before you uh, send it off to that agency. So federal contracted opportunities, right? We talked a little bit about uh, SAM and the CAGE code um, earlier with Tina. So contracting company cage code, it's a commercial and government entity. Uh, cage code is a five character identifier for companies pursuing business with the federal government, okay? Uh, the SAM uh, is where you will go and apply for this cage code. Um, it's a system for award management. Um, here, you're able to register to do business with the US government, um, apply for, this is new, uh, and this is really since COVID, apply for a unique identifying number instead of using your DUNS, your DUNS number. Before COVID, you needed to have a DUNS number to apply for the CAGE code, which is now uh, not necessary. You can simply use your unique identifying number to get the to apply for the CAGE. Also, you're able to update or renew the entity registration here. You also can check the status of the entity registration search for entity, entity registration and exclusion, exclusion records, and you get your case code. Um, and then to apply for this case code, you would go to www.sam.gov, right? So applying for this entity registration, it does take about, I wanna say 30 minutes to about 45 minutes to complete. Um, you will complete certain sections of the, regis the, um, the registration, um, on several sections of the registration, um, once complete and submitted. Um, it takes about, I want to say, two to three weeks before you will actually get assigned that CAGE code. 
they have to validate each section. So, I mean, they go to the IRS to validate the information that you put in there about the business taxes and so forth. So um, if there's a section that does not pass, they will notify you on the next steps to correct it uh, so that they can move forward with uh, the validation process. But for the most part, you would go to sam.gov to register your business or the entity to receive the CAGE code. Now this CAGE code will also go on your capability statement under the list of um, like the, the NASIC codes, the NIGP codes, or the PSC codes, you will also add your CAGE code as well. Again, the Dun & Bradstreet number. Um, it's not really needed to apply for the CAGE code, but you do need it, right? Um, it's free um, and it's needed before you can bid on any government proposal, right? The number must be provided for each business location. So if you have multiple businesses and they have different locations, uh, which, you know, oh, they may share a location, but that's something between you and uh, your business. But most part, it should have its own location. Um, you should apply for the uh, Dun & Bradstreet number. And to do so, um, if you're not sure where to go, it's dnb.com, dunandbradstreet.com. Um, if there's no issues, um, when you complete the registration for the D, the Dun & Bradstreet number, you'll get it right away. Um, but if there is an issue, they'll let you know, and uh, you may have to wait a moment before you are uh, given this number, or maybe something they needed, or something needs to be uh, revised or clarified um, before you get it. Um, but for the most part, it's free. So we're going to jump into the New York City Small Business Services, MWB, right? So being certified with New York State is great, right? But there's so many different agencies that have this certification that you can apply for, right? And if you would like to apply for the New York City Small Business Services, MWBE certification to receive uh, opportunities in New York City, you would go to the SBS Connect uh, to apply for this certification. Now, if you're going to go through uh, the New York State application by completing the New York City addendum, um, either or um, you're able to apply for certification with New York City. Now, with the SBS Connect, I noted here that if you already certified with like another agency or New York State, you can apply uh, with them with a fast track application. Okay, this will move the application through a little sooner. I've seen um, this application get submitted and like the next day they reached out for more information. So they work really quickly. And to go to the address to where to go to complete this application with New York City would be the SBS Connect dot nyc dot gov or simply open up the New York State um, certification application with the New York State contract system and complete the addendum. New York City procurement. So now once you become certified for New York City, you will want to look up opportunities, right? To look up um, some you know contracts that may be current going on that they're looking for MWBEs for. But before you do that, you want to be registered in their payee information portal system. The payee information portal is a service which allows businesses to be a payee vendor for New York City. On this site, you can manage your account information, you can view financial transactions uh, with New York City, and more. To get started, you would click on the, activ the activate button to complete the electronic application. It may take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete, depending on how fast you're able to put this information in. Once the information, I'm sorry, once the registration is complete, you will receive the vendor number that you need to do business with the city, as well as a W-9. Uh, this will allow you to receive payments from New York City, okay? Uh, moving over to Passport, I, I urge you that if you plan on doing business with New York City, please register your business in Passport. Passport is the procurement and sourcing solutions platform. This is where you're able to go and view opportunities um, currently uh, open with them. 
Okay. Um, going to move to the next slide. Another agency that also has, uh, um, you know, NWBE slash DBE and SDBOB certification opportunities would be the MTA for MBE or WBE certification. So you must be certified, right? Um, before reaching out to them or before going for an opportunity um, as for an MWB to satisfy the MWBE goals. Uh, and again, to do that, you would go to Empire State Development or the New York State Contract System to start the uh, MWBE certification application. If you would like to become a DBE and apply for that certification, you would go to, there's several, uh, couple of agencies here that work with this certification. Um, you would go to the NYSUCP, uh, which is Certifying Partners Below, right? So we have Department of Diversity and Civil Rights. They're located in um, New York the City, New York, New York. There's a contact name and email address where you would reach out to get this process started. Also, the New York State Department of Transportation uh, is another uh, another agency that also holds DBE or uh, accepts uh, to apply for DBE certification, I'm sorry, along with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Reach out to them uh, to get uh, the DBE certification application um, and learn about that process of how you are to complete and submit it with these agencies. Also, we have the Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority. Okay. So visit them, uh, these agencies, to learn more about DBE. So MWBEs, DBEs, and SBDBOBs opportunities. So any business can compete for an MTA headquarters or agency contract as a prime or subcontractor, not dependent upon their certification status, right? However, if a firm is seeking to perform work on a contract, that has those mandatory state goals as an MBE or WBE. Again, uh, I've stated previously that you must obtain the uh, certification before um, applying for these uh, opportunities. Uh, your firm must be certified as an MWBE or DBE or SDBOB to do a contracting work with the MTA. DBEs must first obtain the DBE certification from those partners listed previously. Um, to perform the work on the contract as a uh, SDVOB, a uh, service disabled veteran owned business, you must first obtain certification from the New York State Office of General Services, uh, Division of Service Disabled Veterans, Business Development, before uh, going after uh, an opportunity um, to satisfy this goal. So I actually went in and pulled up this site where you are able to go and um, view opportunities with the MTA. So let me go in one moment, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, hope you can see the screen here. So this is doing business with the MTA. I thought this is a really, really cool. I mean, it's really friendly. Um, I go down here and it's actually sectioned off uh, advertising. You have uh, media and film, um, real estate. Uh, it's so much links here, but look, look at this up here. When I clicked on advertising, it gave me the buyer's information. So, um, yeah, hello, Lucy Zachman. Uh, to to buy advertising is something different, but you would reach out to them, and you know, email them um, your capability statement and let them know who you are and what it is that you provide and how you're able to help their needs, satisfy any needs that they may have, right? As that MWBE. there's so many other opportunities here. This is just one of them that I clicked in. I mean, you know, I don't have time to go through all of them, but definitely, um, let, let's see. 
procurement. Current solicitations, right? Opportunities here. Let's click on that. Again, it just goes through the information I just actually talked about a little bit, but I wanted to current solicitations. So the MCA headquarters contract, there's different um, departments within the MCA that, that have different opportunities that may be listed, right? MCA headquarters opportunities, here are some. And they're set asides. Oh, bid results, okay. But yeah, so for the most part, they're listed here, right? How long, the value of it. Right. So you want to go, you want to go here also um, so that you're able to um, receive, you know, register yourself here as one of the vendors. So you're able to, you know, get some of these opportunities emailed to you. Okay, it's going to go back. Okay, so that's the link that you would go to. Um, service disabled veterans, I said you would go to the Office of General Services to apply, and this is the contact information to this uh, agency here and where they're located. Okay, so again, MWBE certified, now networking for procurement. Uh, so what you would do is search current opportunities, right? And these current opportunities are located in the New York State contract system and the New York State contract reporter, right? Um, also, you would um, visit agency MWBE procurement websites like the MTA or the New York City Small Business Services Passport, um, OGS, you have DASNY, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, just to name a few. Um, one moment. You would also attend the, oh, this bar is, okay, there we go. Attend the MWBE procurement networking events. All right, they're regional. So you just have to check the calendar uh, to see which, where they where they are and, um, you know, when is it, you know, where it's being held and what times. Um, so we have the MWBE forum uh, uh, that's located in Albany. It's held every year. Again, that's an awesome event. Um, a lot of networking is go goes on there. Uh, the agency, state agency buyers are there and they want to speak with MWBEs. Um, so I urge um, if you are looking to becoming certified to have this a plan to attend yearly. Um, also the PSE&G at Long Island uh, at the Marriott holds a diversity conference there as well. Their buyers are also there looking for MWBEs to, to speak with and, and put on, um, you know, for, and have them available for, you know, for upcoming opportunities. I mean, you're able to speak with them right there, right? And and be, you know, told the next, your next steps, you know, uh, your capabilities there to give out in, in color. Uh, and so uh, you do want to represent uh, your business and let them know about what it is that you do. Also, Stony Brook has a diversity fair that's held every year as well. Their buyers are there as well, uh, you know, wanting to see you, uh, uh, see you as well <laughs> and speak with you. So definitely uh, being certified, you want to attend and network uh, with these buyers, agency buyers, and other MWBEs, right? Because as one of the questions earlier, there's always an opportunity for you to sub to become a sub on a project. Right. And so it sometimes it's with another MWBE that has the opportunity that needs another MWBE to, um, you know, sub out a portion of that work, too. The New York State contract system, uh, this site may be familiar to most of uh, you guys on the on the call tonight. Um, but because this is where you would go to complete the MWBE certification application. But in addition to that, uh, completing the application, you're also able to view 
current opportunities below and over fifty thousand dollars, right? Uh, so uh, let's see if I can get to this. I'm just gonna stop the screen share if I can and bring this up so that you could see the site as well. So here we go. Much better on the eyes when you do it, um, you know, in a different tab. Um, so here is where you got, look, you can also search the directory for certified MWBEs. Uh, you can also create your profile here on the New York State contract system. So when buyers are looking for MWBEs, uh, they'll have your information as well. Okay, so it says here, New opportunities. This is New York State bid and grant and grant opp opportunities, right? So search bid and grant opportunities over fifty thousand in value. View bid and grant opportunities um, under. So over under, right? So let's see. Let's click on one that says over. Again, those keywords. You got to know what your keywords are, right? And the category, right? Where do you fit? Based on those services or products that you offer. Uh, the agency that you're looking to do work with, right? Which agency? And this is a good way also to getting a list of the agencies, the New York State agencies. So when you're ready to um, network with them, reach out to them and provide them your capability statement, uh, you'll know who to do it, who to search for. So if you want to contact, let's say the Abbott House, right? You want to know the person that is in charge of the buying. Right. You get that information and then you work on uh, learning, you know, you learn a little bit about them, learn a bit about their mission, and then you tailor your capability statement to send to that buyer at, at Abbott House. Right. Um, sometimes you may get them on the phone, right, the buyer, and you talk to them and, you know, you, you follow up with an email, right, with your capability statement. Okay. That's the New York State contract system. Then use keywords to search for the opportunities on this site. Another site I talked about earlier was the New York State contract reporter. And on this site, you're able to view opportunities um, Throughout New York, for throughout New York, with agencies throughout New York State, on this site uh, you can also see. Uh, let's see if I could, because again, I'm not sure if you guys are able to see all of the uh, sections here uh, clearly. So I'm going to pull it up again in a different window, so that you're able to see the site. Perfect. So on this site, as you can see here at the top, um, there's opportunities listed here with these numbers, right? Opportunities posted today, there's 37 posted. Opportunities posted in the last seven days, there's 207 opportunities there. Total available opportunities is 838. There's a lot of opportunities on this site that you could look for, right? Now, what I would suggest doing in order to view the information or to receive um, and to receive the information about that opportunity, you will need to create a profile here. You need to register your business here uh, to receive um, alerts, customized alerts, and to be able to um, access the bid information. Also down here, if you click on these boxes here, I want to find contract. I want to find contracts to bid on. Click on that, and it shows you where to go. You know, you, you know, uh, browse contract and opportunities now. Register now for your free account. So either or what you want to do, but what I strongly urge is for you to register now to set up uh, your profile here uh, so that when you do look at the opportunities, you're able to click on that opportunity for more information. Okay, I'm just going to go back see the presentation.
Networking to secure procurement is a whole process, right? It's all about learning about the agency and their needs and creating that capability statement to uh, target that agency and let them know how you're, you're there to help satisfy that need. You wanna start by making that list that I just talked about, make a list of agencies that you that you wanna do business with, right? And then you wanna tailor your capability statement to the need and then send that buyer your cap capability statement um, or contact, reach, the, reach out to them, right? You may get some on the phone, right? And if that being the case, you know, you wanna introduce yourself, let them know who you are and, and let them know that you're there to assist them with their needs and then follow up with that capability statement. But either way, you need to uh, be diligent in, in reaching out to these agencies. You wanna know who they are, know these buyers, and then connect with them, whether by phone or by email. Um, I do wanna stop now to take the opportunity to answer any more questions you guys may have. I, I know I went through the slides, um, I didn't see any questions in the chat, but if you have any questions now before I move on, please raise your hand or put it in the chat or Q&A. Okay, I Oh, Henry's. Hi, Deltra. Hi, Kenya. Hi. I was wondering, Um, that website looks uh, super good. The one with the MTA uh, okay. website. Mm -hmm. Is there any way, I think I know uh, the the uh, additional person that's on tonight said that we could uh, go on and re-review this in YouTube. But is there any way to get the physical copy of this emailed over? Yeah, send me an email, Delta, and I'll send it to you. Awesome sauce. Thanks, Kenya. You're welcome. And this was a great, this was a great night, like great information, by the way. Good, good. You know, this whole journey is a whole process, right? Once you finish the application, you know, I've seen business owners just be able to just, they just sit on the certification and not really utilize it effectively or even efficiently, right? Just there's ways to do it, right? And it starts with this capability statement. It starts by knowing those agencies that you wanna work with and that you're able to help them, help solve their needs. Um, I mean, attending those networking events, uh, the MWBE forum that's held in Albany yearly, uh, the local uh, regional uh, MWBE diversity events. I mean, attend them, network with the buyers, network with other MWBEs, um, because you guys could, you know, somehow, you know, work together, right? As a sub, and you know, like uh, earlier I mentioned, you know, you could be a prime, and but you need another MWBE to mm -hmm. give out a portion of the work. So definitely network with them, right? Other MWBEs, SDVOBs, you know, MWBs are needed. MWBEs are needed to satisfy goals. There's a goal out there for that. To go out there for DBE and is to go out there for the SDVOBs. Um, so definitely, you know, depending on your status, just reach out and be out there. Um, network with everyone. You know, with sounds good. Every everywhere you go, right? There's always an opportunity, no matter where you are. You could be in the grocery store. There may be someone next to you that's maybe a buyer, and, and you never know, right? Um, but always, you know, have your capability statements with you, your business cards, you know, on your business cards, when you're certified, put that you're certified with, as an MWBE. So when you give someone your card, they'll see that you're a certified MWBE. So if something comes up in their organization, they will surely reach out. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the chat. Um, can you, okay, I can put my, e okay, that's the center's email in the chat. So if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me, um, you could do so by doing it at EAP Center at sunysuffolk.edu. Or you can give uh, us a call at 631-851-6214 to um, set up an, an appointment with me.
Jay, do we have any questions on Facebook? Uh, I don't think he's responding. So, um, Jay? So while we wait for Jay to come on and let us know whether there were questions on Facebook, I just want to let you know about our next week's webinar uh, on QuickBooks, QuickBooks 101. So QuickBooks is needed uh, for businesses, small businesses that need an accounting uh, method set up in their business. And QuickBooks would be the way to go. Uh, I want you to join us uh, next week at 7 p.m. for the QuickBooks 101 to learn how to get started right? Learn the ins and outs of using this tool or this software for your small business. For, for your small business. Now, the registration link is here. Jen, are we able to put that in the chat? Yes, I'm getting it in right now. Uh, okay, because if not, I'll stop and then and take it from here. So um, also the samples of the capability statements, if you need that as well, please send me the request. I can send them out to you. Okay, and if there's no, uh, oh, I was just going to say, if there's no other questions, we were going to wrap it up, but there's one in the chat. I'm not sure if this is. That's the link. The Sorry. Link. That's okay. <laughs> Um, so I'll take a moment to see if we have any last minute questions before we wrap it up this evening. Um, just a show of hands, if you can, uh, you could raise your hand uh, if you're in business and thinking of applying for the certification. Certification can take this business, your businesses to the next level. Um, so I believe if you're in business more than one year and making a revenue, grossing sales, you're, you sh and you're a minority or woman, you should be eligible to apply. Um, if you would like to reach out to me to let's learn more about it, let's discuss the certification in your business, uh, feel free to reach out here. Uh, the center's number is here and email. Uh, me or Miss Jennifer would be able to assist you. Um, um, you know, especially with set up, setting up an appointment to do the one-on-ones. Elizabeth, do you have a question? She raised her hand for certification. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I believe we can wrap it up. Yes, and we do have um, our YouTube link in the chat. Um, our recording will be posted on YouTube. Um, so that'll be available by early next week.